hello out there, and um, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, and um, I thought I'd do another video. Ooh, it is all over the place this morning. Right then, uh, gonna run through uh, something that uh, every engineer should know. Okay, a lot of you actually uh, do know how to do it correctly, and there's loads of you that think you know how to do it correctly, and you do an absolutely uh, poor job of it. Okay, and there's quite a few that never, ever, ever have done this in your entire life, and you need to start doing it. It's called yourself an engineer, and um, that's soldering. Okay, yep, uh, it's one of my biggest. Uh, mm, how should I put it? Bugbear. Yep. Mm, okay. Um, about uh, electronics nowadays, there's tons of people out there which say they can do it and they can't do it. And there's uh, loads of people out there who call themselves engineers that actually can't do it and they've never actually done any of it in their entire life. And when they do do it, they say, uh, well, okay, I should know how to do this. I'm not going to make myself look a fault and I'm just going to do it and go into it absolutely blind. So um, I thought I'll cover it today. We're going to be uh, recapping on the soldering tools. Okay. And the uh, types of equipment they're going to use, different solders, uh, run through the soldering process, okay, not just how to do a solder joint or a solder wire, but the actual process, what takes place when the uh, solder is applied, okay, so we'll talk about wetting, uh, things like that, we'll talk about things like uh, flux, different solders, uh, leaded and unleaded, uh, we'll go through soldering, um, first off soldering wires together, Okay, very common one. Okay, uh, we'll look at soldering um, wires to things like uh, turrets and tags and pins, etc. Okay, different techniques you can use, um, and we'll also look at doing uh, through hole soldering. Okay, so uh, soldering to the circuit board, and we'll also look at soldering um, SMD. Okay, surface mount devices, which are becoming more and more and more common. And uh, there's no escaping that. And just like I said, um, same with lead free and uh, rosin free stuff. Um, yeah, can't escape it now. It is here to stay. And uh, love it or loathe it, I loathe it, but uh, it's with us. Anyways, um, first up, uh, a recap. So, I guess uh, soldering irons first, okay? Now, if you take a look up here, got some soldering irons okay make sure that you don't get uh, one of these ones okay these are um, the mains plug in sort of cheap and cheerful soldering irons okay they're more trouble than they're worth steer clear of them okay they're cheap they're nasty you don't get a very good job and um, you want to be a professional get yourself one of these okay got a couple of different ones here Okay, these are the irons that I've got in the lab, okay. Missing out on a well one because someone's actually uh, borrowed that out of the lab without telling me and um, couldn't get a picture of it for you. Okay, but we've got the uh, Antex and we've got the Zytronics, they're both good brands. Um, Antex do do the plug in ones, okay, with the mains cable coming out of the back, still, okay, don't bother with them, get yourself the temperature controlled ones like these, okay. Reason being, Temperature control ones allow you to do small joints, big joints, um, shields, um, soldering onto large areas like ground planes and things like that. So you can you can vary the, can, the temperature on it that you're actually getting at the tip. So that allows you to do the whole range of soldering. Okay, the ones that you plug in the wall, they're stuck with one particular temperature. Either they'll be too hot and they'll ruin what you're soldering. They'll be too cold. And they won't solder properly. You get a very bad joint, which will, joint which will just break over time. Or they'll be just right. And the ones that are just right, you can only use them for a very small amount of jobs. It's kind of like they're they're s specific for that particular function. And um, what's the point? You have to get three of them. One for heavy soldering, one for lightweight soldering, one for medium soldering. What's the point? Three silver and irons, you know, 20 quid a pop, 25 pound a pop, you might as well go out and get yourself a single soldering station, you know, you don't have to pay mega pounds for them nowadays, and uh, 
yeah, there you go. So get yourself a really good soldering station. What you have to make sure is on your uh, station is that you can readily get hold of the uh, tips, okay? You need a couple of different tips for your soldering station, okay? And I've got a few up here. Got your uh, conical tips. They're the ones that you want to avoid, okay? They sell them. They're not much good. Don't even bother. Okay, the more trouble than the worth. I'm not even going to bother talking about them on here. Um, next one down, you've got your chisel tip or screwdriver tip ones. They're the ones which you always use. Well, not always. So there's another one there. Okay. Uh, for general soldering and a huge majority of your soldering, you generally use a chisel tip. Okay, it's because you've got a flat tip, flat sided. You can lay it on your board, it's still in contact with your component leg, you can fit the solder in perfectly, you know. It's got very good, um, you know, you can get the heat to your board very well with them. Same goes for um, these ones here, these are called, uh, what, one the name, they've got multiple names, um, uh, 45 degree angle, soldering tips, or um, bevel tips, not called them beveled. Okay, they're circular, semi-circular tip, um, and they're really, really good for soldering surface mount. Okay, surface mount chips, things like that, they're a dream to use. Okay, so they're the tips, okay? When you get these tips, don't go for the smallest one possible, because the heat transfer to whatever you're soldering is going to be absolutely bugger all. Okay, you're not going to be soldering anything particularly well, so get yourself a decent size tip. Okay, um, by that I mean, um, say, uh, two to three, say two millimeter tip for general usage. Okay, it's nice and chunky, you can get the heat to your board reasonably quickly. You don't have to keep the iron on your board for, you know, more than a few seconds. Okay, because when you're soldering, you're applying heat to the board. Heat can damage, it does damage, okay. You can lift tracks off the board, um, you can destroy components, um, when you're soldering cables, you might start melting the insulation, so, um, they, you know, it's really good. These ones are really good, 2mm, it's roughly all that you need. You might want to go for, say, a 1mm one for smaller work, touch-up work, but 2 is more than enough. With the bevel tip ones, say, 2 to 3mm, perfectly fine, okay. Um, like I say, you can go lower if you want to do touch-up work, but for general usage, stick to mid-range, okay, about 2mm size bits. They're perfect, they're all that you need, and they'll do absolutely every job imaginable. And just because it's s &D, it's small, don't worry about it. Don't worry, okay, if it's a big bit. Mm -hmm. If you do soldering properly, you won't have a problem. The only time when you need to use a small bit is if you've got to get into very, very tight spaces. Yeah, the only time when you really need to use them. Next up, uh, I suppose is solder. Um, no, no, big, big, big uh, thing solder is. Okay, it comes in lots and lots and lots of different types. You can get um, uh, solder bars for um, things like a, a reflow tank. Um, wave soldering, etc. Biting bars, you melt it out of the tank, slide your board across it, everything's soldered in place. Don't really use that for hand soldering, so I'm not going to cover it. Same goes for ball solder. Okay, you can get solder in balls. Okay, and uh, the images are all flying up here. Okay, take a look. Okay, exactly the same thing. Uh, pellets, exactly the same thing. Okay, they're all used mainly for industrial soldering. Uh, wave soldering, things like that. Okay, uh, the ones that we're going to be concentrating here is either the uh, wide solder, looks like this, or the solder paste, okay, and it actually looks like that. Okay, they're the ones that you use predominantly when you're soldering, okay, you're doing hand soldering with the irons that are surrounding you, they're the dead solders what you need. Now, the solder comes in two types. Two types, leaded and unleaded. Okay, first time that you solder, use leaded. It's really, really good. It flows very, very well, and um, it's really difficult to screw up what you're doing if you do it the right way. It's almost impossible to. 
get the unleaded variety, there are a lot of pitfalls. Okay, you have to be very careful of how we solder. Okay, so we'll cover that towards the end. For now, we'll do the uh, leaded soldering. So, uh, if we take the solder wire, you can get different sizes, okay, and different uh, flux content in your solder. The thinner the solder, the less flux there is. So, here's an example a thin solder, it's got single core flux through the middle. The next size up, say, uh, what is it, a 0.7.8 millimeter solder? Uh, you've got a multi cord flux, which looks like this. Okay, solder paste, already seen that. Okay, but here it is again. And um, it contain, you can get it containing flux, and you can get ones that can, don't contain flux. Same thing goes for solder wire as well. You can get ones which don't contain any flux. Don't bother with them. You need the flux, okay? Flux is very important because it's uh, used for uh, wetting, okay? And uh, I'll give you a demonstration of what we mean by wetting uh, right now with a um, leaded solder where it contains flux and it doesn't contain flux, okay? So let's see what it looks like. And in doing that, I'll do it in the lab. Oh, this is a sheet of copper okay, that we're going to be soldering to. I haven't bothered cleaning the surface um, yet because uh, all that I'm doing here is a uh, demonstration of different solders and uh, how they solder to the uh, material. Okay, So we're going to be taking a look at a uh, solid so tin lead solder, we're going to be looking at some um, uh, flux core solder and the what flux is used for. Okay, so this is the first one. This is um, uh, a, a tin lead solder. Okay, there's no flux in this. Okay, and uh, this is what happens when you, you don't use flux. So, okay, iron onto the board, melt me uh, solder in. As you can see, it's uh, not taken to the copper at all. It looks like it is on the camera, but it isn't. If I move this about, you can see it's not really bonding with the copper. It's not merging. There's no wetting taking place. Okay, and the reason for that is um, because you've got a well. The reason for that is the copper is very, very reactive to the atmosphere, to the air. Okay, what we breathe. Um, and uh, what happens is, is that you get a, a copper oxide layer building up. Uh, there you go, you can see me, there's the solder, okay, it hasn't took to the board at all. What happens is you get a copper oxide layer building up on this board, and it prevents solder from um, taking to the board, and um, the wetting process doesn't uh, take place. And by wetting, I mean um, it's the process where the solder and the copper the surface copper fuses together and it creates a new alloy okay of uh, in this case it would be tin lead copper okay it's only a very very small layer but it, it just seeps in it's just enough to, for the solder to seep in for the solvent action to take place and uh, fuse with the copper and um, what I have somewhere is some uh, tin there it is over here Okay, here's the other solder, it looks exactly the same as the other one, okay, except this has got a flux core to it. Okay. And um, what flux does is it's it's natural natural it's a cleaner, it's, it's like an acid, okay. And it just takes off the um, polishes off the surface of the uh, copper. So we'll do it on the we'll do it on this section here. Uh, up here, okay. I've got a fingerprint here, okay, so it's pretty nasty, okay. I'm bothered cleaning it and uh, we'll solder it in, and uh, there we go. Look, look at that, it's took straight away, nice and right. It's not, can't knock it off or anything, it's uh, on there. And there we have it, okay. So, actually, wetted, okay, and it's fused with the copper surface. Okay, and that's what the use of flux is. But sometimes, um, if your copper is particularly badly oxidised, okay, you might need to polish it up a bit. And if you get a solder which uh, isn't 
flux or anything like that. You can buy the flux separately. And what I've got here is a uh, flux pen. Okay, you can see it there. And uh, that's the tip. It's like a felt tip pen. You can wipe it on the surface of the topper. Okay. So we've got a flux area. And if we go back to our um, the original solder, which I showed you at the beginning, which didn't actually take to the board, because we've now got some uh, flux here on the board, okay, you can actually solder to it quite nicely. There it is, okay, this is what flux does. It, it, it acts as a uh, cleaner to the board, allowing the solder to take, to take to the copper. So whenever you go out to the uh, store and you buy your first lot of copper, always make sure that it's uh, this stuff with the uh, flux core, so the uh, flux can actually uh, eat away at the copper, the copper oxide layer, okay, allowing you to solder it to the board. And when you actually solder, I don't know, it's not that good underneath this webcam because the camera still hasn't turned up, okay, a uh, camcorder, which I was hoping to have, okay. But what you're aiming for when you're doing this, okay, is um, nice shiny joint, it should be a uh, slightly concave, in this case it's dome because it's, we haven't got a component there or anything, but um, yeah, you can see it, and uh, just to iterate that uh, wetting process, okay, where the uh, two fuse together, I'll just uh, suck up this uh, solder, we'll get rid of the solder first, we'll suck it off with a solder sucker, yeah, you can still see I've got a slight bit of solder here, so let's uh, take off a little bit more and uh, let have it. It's a very, very smooth layer of uh, solder here. It's, it is, in actual fact, um, alloyed to the board. You'll never actually be able to get all that solder off unless you scrub and scrub and scrub it with a, an abrasive rubber. Similar to what I sold in showed you in the soldering tools, okay, you got that abrasive rubber to surface clean your copper board with, okay, and uh, yeah, to get rid of that oxide, and um, yeah, the only way to get that off is either to cut it out, or um, sand it off, or rub it off, or, um, you know, it's, it's well and truly on there, okay, so solder takes to the copper. Now if you didn't have this wetting process and you, you solder didn't take and it was an actual fact like this uh, ball shaped copper here, okay, and these components aren't going to solder to the board, they're just going to fly off the board aren't they? So flux is very very important. And uh, we'll just go through that on the white board, um, just to run over it again, and um, we'll start doing some soldering of uh, wires, and I'll show you how to um, the uh, soldering process from uh, start to finish. Okay, cleaning the tips, uh, tinning, and um, soldering some cables together.